I'm going to show you a little bit about how to work your way around in Digital Cat. And I'm using a new program that I'm not that familiar with, so we'll see how this goes. I've set mine up for colors that are um, helpful to me, and I have those set up in a template. So if you ever want to change a template, you go to Format here and Apply Template. My template files, everything should be in your transcript file, but we have gotten a little bit uh, whacked out on my files here, so I'm going to pretend that we had the template file. Here we go. There it is. And my template is default, and it actually will put colors in the transcript. So you can see if there's a, a Q and an A, that type of thing. And then what we do is we put a final template on that at the end to get the colors off. These colors help us show, though, the different paragraphing styles. That is one of the things that is very awkward in Digital Cat is you have to do paragraphing styles. So you see this format paragraph, change current style. You see the different styles that are there, like a by paragraph would be where the by would go back to the, the beginning of the line there, or center, or colloquy, or colloquy indented, which we only do if we're quoting like a transcript where they're reading from a transcript. Uh, the default is what we normally use. And you won't have to use that many of these. You'll have a paragraph and colloquy and those type of things, but you want to set things up in paragraphing. And so, like, we have all these quick keys. So, like, here the answer is to Vegas. So, I'm going to hit Alt-A, and that's going to give me the answer bank. But if I wanted to make that colloquy, I would hit Alt-P for me for paragraph C to get me down to the colloquy. I would hit colloquy. You can choose a list of names, or you can put a new speaker in. So, it could be the witness. And you add that in, and then you just choose the witness and see it goes in the right format there, and it gives you your colon after it, and it gives you two spaces, and it caps the next word. There are tons and tons of quick keys in Digital Cat, and that's what I really wanted to show you is you go to Tools, Options, Keyboard, and there are standard key commands here. Like my batch spell check is Control B. You can make these things be anything you want. I have talked to several proofreaders that do not use quick keys. I cannot imagine that they don't. But my, you know, you can do Alt C or Control C to center a paragraph, or you can make it be an uh, F key. My F keys are to be to find um, what we call untranslates. So I hit F9, and that takes me to an untranslate, which is a bracket, and here's an an index thing there. But we speak to each other in these brackets to put the beginning bracket and the ending bracket and that will let you jump from note to note as you either make notes to your reporter or your reporter makes notes back to you. And I'm also going to show you how to do an automatic index. So if you've put your description in of what your index paragraph is going to be, then you take and highlight that and I do control N for new index, new exhibit. And it pops the number in there. Number two, it gives you your description. Make sure your number is right. It will follow the number. See how it says auto increment number and capitalize first letter? And you say OK. And that will put that in so you don't have to go back and find that. You can do the same thing to do a witness. And I just hit control page up, which is my key to get to the top of the document. But if you want to put a witness in, where we have it spaced out like this, you highlight the witness name. I do control W and that puts in my new witness. And then that will give me my automatic index page, which would look like this. And see my automatic exhibit index page looks like this, where I've just popped in and pulled out the descriptions. So this tools options keyboard is huge in giving quick keys to yourself. One of the ones that is absolutely crucial is delete next word. And I use that all the time. And if you're a proofreader, you probably use that all the time too. I use control error right. If any of you would like you to, me to send you my list of commands, I'd be more than glad to. But there are commands in here that as a proofreader, you are never going to need. Dictionary entry 2, you are not going to need that. So you just hit delete, get that out of your list. Dictionary 10, I never use that. Hit delete, all those things. But you can also add. There's a list of absolutely everything in here. You can apply globals, you, globals, you can apply a page style, you can cap the first letter. I have, for me, capping the first letter is 
um, F4. So if I'm there and say there's a name of a company and I have three words that I need to cap, I hit F4, 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 and it just jumps automatically to each word. If I want to put that word in all caps, I hit the shift key twice real quickly and that gives caps for those words. All these are little things, but they add up to time. And all of us are about making more money than less money. And the more money we can make with using less time, the better off we are. See how it's hard to get a buy paragraph? Let's just kill this. I've got control D for my delete line command. And I come down, if I hit return, and it wants to you know, give me a different paragraph. I hit alt P for paragraph, B for buy, and there I've got my buy paragraph. And I put in Mr. Hoblitzel. And away we go. Um, one of the things that we do different than voice writers do is if there's an objection, let's say here's the question and there's an objection in there and Mr. Green says objection and the witness goes ahead and answers. That is going to always be an A. It's not going to be the witness because that answer is responsive to the question. So I'm not sure there's just been different trainings, but for real-time reporters, we always want to answer. If it's the answer is going back to the questioner, it's going to be an A. Now, if the deponent here said to his lawyer, why did you object? Then that's going to be the deponent. It's, it's not going to be the witness. It's going to be the deponent in a deposition. And then they have a little conversation, and then he ends up telling him to answer, and he answers, that's going to be A. So um, that's one of the main things that I would like you to know. Um, the quick keys are just huge. The, there are drop-down menus that you can look on all of these things, but we can save include files. Let's say you want to um, have an include file that says off the record, and you just type that up, and you highlight it like this, and you pop up here, and you say save include file, and you would name it whatever you would want it to be. And if you're working for one of us that already have include files, you're going to say insert include file. And we would have sent you different things. This is like petitioner's exhibit right here, P-E-T-E-X-I-N-C. If it's an include file, it's going to have I-N-C on the end of it. So you pop that open and in comes your include file. Granted, I put it in at a you know, crazy place, but that's how easy it is to do include files. So you need to make sure that you're including to their include files for errata sheets, title sheets, all those kinds of things. They don't have those things already done. Um, that's probably, I'm going to stop for now just to see if this captures, and if we need to do more, we will.